untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white ramp deck featuring four copies of Elspeth Resplendent as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 5-mana Planeswalker starts out at 5 loyalty and can plus 1, letting us choose up to one target creature, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it and a counter from among Flying, First Strike, Lifelink or Vigilance, so offers a ton of flexibility. Lifelink very useful against aggressive decks, then Flying can maybe help protect against opposing Flying creatures like the various Angel decks and then Vigilance helps play offense and defense to protect our Planeswalkers, and can also help play around the Wandering Emperor, which can only exile tapped creatures, which is very useful. And then Elspeth also plays best with creatures that are relatively large already, so they can benefit more from those ability counters. And that's of course perfect in this green-white ramp deck, where we have some large 4-4 creatures to start pumping up with the plus 1 counters and various keywords. Then a minus 3 looks at the top 7 cards of our library, putting a permanent card with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield, with a shield counter on it, giving it some built-in protection. So of course best to hit some 3 mana creatures with it. So we have our Brutal Cathar as one of the key removal spells in the deck, exiling a creature when it enters. And then we also have Topiary Stomper, one of the new additions from Streets of New Capenna, a 4-4 creature with Vigilance, but it also counts as a ramp card, because when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for a base land and put it onto the battlefield tapped, but the Stomper cannot attack or block unless we control seven or more lands, so it can take a little bit to get going, but since we have so many ramp effects in the deck, we can usually attack and block with it by turn five, and then we'll greatly benefit from Elspeth as well, and turn three Stomper sets up a turn four Elspeth, so it curves nicely into each other besides wanting to hit it with the minus three as well, and then a minus seven is quite achievable, creating five three three white angel creature tokens with flying, which can help end the game if we don't expect any sweepers. Then looking at the rest of our deck, we're also a Storm the Festival deck, which can look at the top 5, putting any permanents with mana value 5 or less from among them onto the battlefield, and can also be flashed back out of the graveyard, so perfect with our 5 mana Planeswalkers. We're also playing 2 copies of Ren and Seven, creating some large Tree Folk tokens, also very synergistic with Isika's Chariot, which can perhaps copy those large Tree Folk tokens, and Chariot also plays quite nicely with Elspeth, as we can maybe put a flying counter on Chariot, so the opponent won't be able to block it as easily easily, so we can keep copying more and more tokens. And then we also have a lot of ways to play Chariot on turn 3 in this deck, thanks to turn 1 Neverwinter Dry it, turn 2 Sacrifice it, get a forest, and then at 2 mana we've got a bit more ramp, with 2 copies of Emergent Sequence, can find a land, putting some counters on it, turning it into a creature, 2 copies of Tangled Florahedron, can be played as a tap land or a ramp creature, and then Murasa Rootgrazer, a 2-3 with Vigilance, so has better stats, and can tap to put a basic land from our hand onto the battlefield, so that's another way of ramping, but of course we will run out of basic lands in hand eventually, until we maybe play Yasharn to find a forest and a plains, a nice 4-4, bit of a nombo with a Neverwinter Dried as we won't be able to sacrifice it, but it's usually not a big deal. And then we also have Ren and Seven finding extra lands to put in play with a Root Grazer, but overall it does have diminishing returns, so that's the main reason for the split in our two drops. Elspeth can also hit Florahedron and Root Grazer, but cannot hit Emergent Sequence, and in the late game we're sometimes better off with a tapped Tangled Veil as opposed to Emergent Sequence, which is more vulnerable to removal, but in early game sequence does have its advantages, as it can account as an extra land, which also produces mana, so is better at enabling Topiary Stomper early. And then we already mentioned Yasharn, so I think we covered everything except for the mana base, where we have four copies of Lair of the Hydra, which is an important part of our game plan as a nice mana sink to close out the game, especially when combined with Elspeth, which can put plus one counters on it, which will stay there permanently, as well as the various ability counters, so maybe a flying Lair of the Hydra can close out the game. And then we've got a lot of basics to go with our Root Grazer and to find with Topiary Stomper and Neverwinter Dried, so six forests, six plains, got the various channel lands which are also quite useful as additional interaction, and some dual lands with pathway and farmland. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable enough. Double Stomper can fix our white mana for Elspeth, ramps into Storm the Festival. Brutal Cathar also quite good at dealing with a green deck, but we'll need some white mana first. Take two. And a pack leader. Alright, so 
scary start from the green deck. But luckily we were on the play, so we might still have a chance. So next turn we cannot quite enable Stomper yet. We would go up to 6 lions total. Might have to Brutal Cathar, Exile the Troll. That seems acceptable. And then next turn we'll be able to enable Stomper by playing another one. Can go for Storm the Festival as well. Seems better than Elspeth. Unless we get lucky and hit another Brutal Cathar. But that seems a little risky. So we'll exile and pass. Gonna see a fight spell, Blizzard Brawl. At least no third snow land, so not getting one additional power to enable pack tactics just yet. So we'll take another five. And a ranger class. Okay. Well, we need a big storm the festival here. I think that beats going for anything else. Finding, well, two pretty good ones, Yasharn and Brutal Cathar. Could exile the wolf token so it doesn't come back, or probably go for Old Growth Troll as a bigger threat. Get a couple more lanes. And then next turn, Elspeth can uh, potentially give one of our creatures flying or lifelink. Opponent levels up Ranger class. Fine to trade Yasharn. Pack leader draws. So I probably have to block a 3 3 creature, even though that plays poorly in the face of Inscription of Abundance. But if I block the 2 1, then Inscription just kills me, unless I want to jump with Brutal Cathar, which I'm not too interested in. So we'll block Pack leader and then. Hopefully, it's just a plus one plus one type pump spell instead. It is an inscription, sadly. Okay, so I can enable Stomper, and then I can give it lifelink. We can minus Elspeth in hopes of finding another Brutal Cathar, which is maybe my best bet. Alternative is play another Stomper, have Lair of the Hydra left over. Maybe that's not so bad. A lair could be a 2-2 creature, and then next turn I can maybe flash back Storm the Festival. Let's see, 4, 7, 8, I guess we would be one short still. Or we can make a 5-5 five, five, lifelinking Vigilant Stomper attack, go up to 8. I think that's slightly safer over minusing in the hopes of hitting another Brutal Cathar. And then even in the event of a Blizzard Brawl, we would still gain life from the fight. And we may or may not have to throw Brutal Cathar under the bus. Opponent's got their own chariots, a gross pack leader. So if their pack leader attacks, I could double block it. Opponent going after Elspeth, actually. That's surprising. So I guess that will kill Elspeth. We can kill a wolf token for free, or we can save Elspeth, lose Brutal Cathar. Yeah, actually, maybe this works out. Eat a wolf, trade for pack leader, opponent gets troll back, but we keep Elspeth at one loyalty. And we get to keep Stomper. Get to untap, and then can plus Elspeth and give Stomper flying so that can attack, play another one, have Lair back. This is your Wait. And that's a pretty huge threat here. Flying Lifelink Vigilance. Now 
Next turn, if we still have Elspeth, I'm probably just gonna plus on Lair of the Hydra. Make that into a huge flying win condition. And otherwise we still have a Storm the Festival we can flash back. Workshop Warchief for 5 mana, so no bullets. Just gains a bit of life. That's fine. So just want to protect Elspeth, if possible. If not, Stomper can maybe get there. And our opponent's just going face. So I think we got this. Pack leader draws. Maybe hoping for a Blizzard Brawl of the top or something. So I can animate Lair of the Hydra. X equals 3. Can block a cat. Block Chariot, block another cat. Seems okay. And then Lair of the Hydra with Elspeth should be more than enough. My opponent does have a Sentinel as a reach blocker, so that can keep them alive. Okay, so do we want to plus Elspeth on Lair? Do we want to flashback Storm? I mean, I guess I could just make a life-linking Lair of the Hydra as well. Although not that we're really in danger of dying at the moment. So animate lair for x equals 5 is enough. Then plus Elspeth. Giving it flying. So that will force a chump from Sentinel. And uh, then we could still play Neverwinter Dryad and have mana to activate it, get an extra land, and then next turn our opponent should be finally dead to our flyers. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn to probably go for Root Grazer. Try and set up turn three chariots. And hope to pick up some more expensive cards along the way. Opponent Mono Black. So you can expect quite a bit of removal. But for now, Root Grazer even blocks Shambling Ghast. So just Eye Twitch attacking. And a Skullport Merchant. So the old school treasure builds. Ren and Seven is exciting if we can get this uh, Chariot in play. And then probably no point in attacking with the Root Grazer first. Put in a basic, play Chariots. And then Ren and Seven, plusing to find more lands that Root Grazer can put in place, also pretty synergistic. But first order of business is presumably to make a Tree Folk and copy it with Chariot. Henrika can force a sacrifice, but can easily get rid of a cat token. Probably should have crewed Chariot first. But don't think it's going to matter too much. Okay, so Renan 7, copy Tree Folk, how does that sound? We'll be under pressure from Henrika and Itwitch. But Itwitch by itself isn't enough. Yeah, I think we should still go for it here, just too powerful not to give it a shot. And then we can crew chariot with cat token and root grazer, so we have two reach creatures back. And hope there is no spot removal here, but there isn't. Now of course still need to worry about blood on the snow. But we'll still leave us with a chariot and a planeswalker. Enrica triggers, can draw. All at run and seven.
And time for a sweeper, I'm sure. Could be a massacre as well. Massacre for four. That's okay. Stomper still cruise chariot. Start by Plusen. Only one land, sadly. So we cannot double spell, but Stomper get an extra forest seems good. And then next turn we could storm the festival. Environmental sciences get a land. Opponent lost a couple of their treasures last turn as well. Go blank makes me discard. Well, that's an easy decision. Exiles my graveyard too, but no storm the festivals in the graveyard. So step one, probably plus. Would have been a nice Storm the Festival hit, as uh, we don't find any lands whatsoever. So not the luckiest with Ren and Seven, but still had to plus first in case we found another copy. Find Chariot Stomper. Keep the original. King Crew, hit for eight. And now we've got a Storm the Festival in the graveyard to maybe flashback as well. Okay. Six mana, blood on the snow perhaps. Yep. So that works. Can get back a creature. Henrika. Which will draw. And then we've got an interesting decision whether we want to cash in Ren and Seven. Which does seem worth it, especially if we hit another copy with Storm the Festival here. The entire forest is in Hit Stomper and Lair, at least the creature lands. Don't have many lands left in the deck. King Crew, copy our Tree folk and hope there's no second blood on the snow, but wouldn't be surprised if there is. Field of Ruin deals with Lair. And the Spider Queen, okay, that can certainly buy them a lot of time. Eye Twitch, another chum blocker. Enrica transforms. Can trade for one tree folk. My Ganjo is huge. That can kill Henrika. So, what's our plan? Crew chariots. Three mana left, so I can animate Lair for seven. Both tree folk are lethal, so those can probably go face. And I guess Lair at Spider Queen. And Chariot at Spider Queen. And then we'll see some blocks. So we can save our chariots. Opponent makes all the chum blocks. I guess I can show only costs two mana because we control a legendary Hesika's chariot. So it could have potentially pumped Lair more, not that it really mattered. Opponent may be deciding what they'll learn for with Eye Twitch. And yeah, if they don't have another. Sweeper, we could actually get there, but that's a big if. My will cannot be 
Meadog Massacre is not enough, so it really has to be blown onto the snow to deal with the tree folk. At which this card's in draws, so they're desperately digging for blood on the snow, so they didn't have one in hand. Plays a land, Spider Queen draws a card, spiders are not enough. Did they get their eye twitch? That's not it. And a merchant, awesome. We've got three lethal tree folk and our opponent explodes. So a very close game here against Mono Black. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Missing some early ramp, but got a bit of interaction with the double brutal Cathar. Yasharn to help hit our land drops, and then Elspeth to take over. Opponent on the red deck, so the lifelink from Elspeth can be particularly effective, and turn two sequence is nice. And could use another planes perhaps. Although I suppose for uh, Storm the Festival we need a lot of green. Turn to Harvester. And there's our Storm the Festival, but Yasharn can come down, get another forests. Got a blocker for etching. Opponent could take out our planes with Harvester. Then we still have Brutal Cathar as a reasonable play. Alright, now Epicure means Harvester could take out Yasharn instead. They're just offering the trade. Well, given that we have Elspeth, I don't really feel inclined to trade off Yasharn. I'll take four. And then we can go for Vigilance first. Attack. And hope there's no third blood token. Or removal on your Sharn would be painful too. But then we probably would have seen it last turn. And uh, yeah, maybe next turn we can make our pig fly. Opponent's probably playing Obnixilis, which is very beatable thanks to the flying and lifelink that Elspeth provides, and eventually storm the festival going over the top. Opponent sends in the team. So this is a meat hook massacre, perhaps. They can massacre for two, so if I block etching, we're still good. They might have a strangle dealing three, so that's a reason to just block Fuldaren Epicure. Yeah, you know what. And if they want to strangle plus me took massacre for one, be my guest. It's going to be up Nixilis. Just uh, the single Nixilis, not sacrificing anything. Okay, so we have a few options. Could storm the festival, maybe after activating Elspeth in case we find another. Elspeth could give Yasharn lifelink, could give it flying to take out Omnixilus, although a lifelink seems slightly more valuable at 8 life. So let me start there. And then for single red they shouldn't have any way of sacrificing the devil to deny the life gain. Not storm. Alternatively could Brutal Cathar exile the devil, kill Omnixilus. Which is also reasonable, we could even double Brutal Cathar. Yeah, maybe that's actually better. Deal with a Harvester. Deal with Obnixilus, gain life. It's probably going to be too much for them to overcome. So we can start by attacking. Also reasonable to go face at this point. We do potentially suspect a Meat Hook Massacre, which could deal with both Brutal Cathars, but still leaves us in good shape with Yasharn on board alongside an Elspeth close to ultimate. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one.
Okay, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one Dryad. If it doesn't get removed, helps us ramp. And then sets up turn three Chariot. Stomper and Yasharn for extra lands. And then we're hoping for one of our Planeswalkers, maybe a Storm the Festival. Now if they remove Dryad, turn one with like a Strangle. We could be in a bit of trouble since we're missing double green. Alright, just a tap land. So you can get a sneaky attack in. And then under most circumstances we're sacking Dryad, but might as well wait. Opponent with a Visionary, so kind of a Junt value graveyard deck. So it could be a pretty grindy matchup, so finding something like Storm the Festival is going to be key. For now I can play Chariots and uh, get that going. Opponent might have the Riveteer's Charm making me sacrifice Chariot, but if we play our Sharn first, we can sack that instead. Get a couple lands. And yep, there's Riveteer's Charm. So, I guess best case scenario, we get to Crew Chariot and sack your Sharn. And attack with the cat tokens as well. So that worked out. Now we are not really working with a whole lot in hand. So we'd love to pick up some more action. Don't even have Lair of the Hydra as one of our creature lands. So a lot riding on chariots to survive and binding takes care of it, so... Yeah, this game might swing around. Okay, Brutal Cathar deals with Visionary at least. And then we're hoping there's no Meat Hook Massacre in our future. Or we can hold it, but then we're not applying as much pressure. And at least Stomper will survive Massacre. And also able to attack and block now. Okay, opponent's at 7. Let's see if they have a sweeper. If not, we're in pretty good shape. It's gonna be Duress, seeing a handful of lands. So, Massacre is now out of the question. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has a lot of ramp. Kind of missing something to ramp into, but hopefully we'll find it along the way. Turn one Dryad. Turn two, probably sacrifice it. Opponent's Black White Angels. So Brutal Cathar is key. And it's going to be a Luminarch. Which might be worth exiling here. Or we can keep ramping with Stomper. The Flyers might be a bigger threat than Aspirant itself. But I could see the advantage of just getting Stomper online sooner. So we'll wait on Brutal Cathar for one turn. Especially if they have Retribution, we would rather exile the 4 4 Angel so it doesn't come back. And there it is. Okay, so now we've got a pretty clean turn with Stomper and Brutal Cathar. Still a Valkyrie to worry about, so we'll need. Maybe Renan 7 or Elspeth to provide to reach or flying. Or another Brutal Cathar. So, yep. Yeah. 
Stomper, enable Stomper. Suppose we can offer the trade first, although then Dry doesn't get to attack. Valkyrie will be able to kill one of our Stompers. So, still gonna need a good top deck here, since the uh, final chapter giving double strike is also gonna represent a ton of damage. Lisa, 4 5 lifelink. Yep. So, opponent can either attack or kill a creature. Decides to attack. And Chariot is not gonna save me here. So, yeah, GG's. Double strike is gonna be more than enough. Yeah, this is definitely a matchup where we just need to find one of those key cards, like I mentioned. Otherwise, it's gonna be really difficult. Cave of the Frost Dragon can animate as well. And that'll do it. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is a little clunky, but it has potential. So I'm gonna keep. And then highest upside is play Dryad, draw an untapped land next turn. Alternatively, play tap Florahedron, next turn cast Florahedron. And then we can maybe play and sacrifice Dryad in the same turn. We're missing white mana at the moment, but a Renan 7 could help with that, and of course we can just storm the festival as well. Okay, play Dryad. Plan to sacrifice it. Put on blue-white, could be control. So, can cast a chariot here, maybe. White mana's good. Could also go for Renan 7, which if it resolves can also plus to then storm the festival. Opponent could of course be sitting on a counter spell, and Chariot into Renan 7 is a nice curve. And uh, also plays around Jory Disruption, which the opponent could easily have. So let's try that. Alright, offer you can't refuse, gives us some treasure at least. So it could have been worse. Opponent stuck on three, and we get to try again. Maybe a storm of the festival this time. Finding a stomper, and I think just a land. Okay, so got a ton of mana now all of a sudden. And a few Planeswalkers in hand. Which are good at dealing with sweepers. Opponents still only single white. So this might be a card draw spell they're setting up. We can go for some Planeswalkers here. Can play two of them. So how about start with Run and Seven. And then we can still Elspeth. And then... Could make a Tree Folk, unless we want to play around a Sweeper a little bit better. In which case we can plus. Since it feels like we have enough pressure in play already. Find some nice lanes. 
I'll restore storm the festival in the graveyard too. And now we can Elspeth. Chariot also reasonable here. Now we can plus. Opponent again doesn't have double white, so also no wandering emperor to worry about. Let's go for lifelink maybe. And there's a memory deluge which we suspected. Well, we've got two planeswalkers. Those survive sweepers as well as farewell, which deals with everything else. And we can start flashing back Storm the Festival now, so we've got a huge mana advantage over the opponent. They are playing green as well. Fortels. Another Stomper. So a lot of options available. Probably want to keep plusing Elspeth. Could plus on Lair of the Hydra as well. Which is another good threat to follow up. Although, if they have a Sweeper, keeping the Lair in case of maybe spot removal here might be worth it. And our opponent could have a march, for instance, to exile it for one mana. So I don't think we're animating Lair, even though we could present lethal with it. So where do we stand? So we'll start with minusing Ren, make a tree folk. Elspeth can plus on maybe even the Florahedron at this point. Give it Vigilance. This is your fault. Can flashbacks turn the festival after attacking. And then we'll have an abundance of threats, including creature lands. And uh, make that another lair, root grazer, sure. So I think we've got most of our bases covered. Opponent has an endless detour bouncing Elspeth. Don't need to keep it on top since we have another one. So our opponent will need to wipe the board and have instant speed removal for Lair. So there's a Doomscar. So maybe start with Chariots. Or we can storm the festival again. But Chariot still leaves the threat of Lair of the Hydra. Which, I guess Rapun doesn't have any white mana. So they would need a bounce spell to deal with it. So probably fine to attack. X equals 4. Don't know if we had enough mana for double Lair for X equals 4. I guess we did, so that was probably the play. Opponent has a Boseju to deal with our non-basic land. Fair enough. But yeah, at this point it feels like it doesn't really matter what we do. Just clicking some buttons. And Broker's Charm to draw. And I can't imagine them getting out of this. Four mana. Don't think there's any fog effects in standard. So, where do we begin? Make a tree folk. Flashback Storm the Festival, after Crewing Chariot maybe. Hitting another Ren and another Chariot. Keep the original. And attack.
Okay, and our opponent finally gives up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Some early ramp, interaction with Brutal Cathar, Elspeth to go over the top. Stomper wants to get another planes to fix for double white. So, yeah, I think I'm okay with uh, Florahedron as a creature to maybe set up a chariot early if we draw it. Otherwise, I could see the advantage of playing it as a tap land turn one, turn two. You can play a lair, and then Stomper ramps into Elspeth, and we'll have the extra land from Florahedron. But extra mana certainly comes in handy when it comes to cards like Storm the Festival as well. Opponents black white. Do they remove Florahedron is a question. They do not. So I could Stomper, or we could dry at Sacrifice, which kind of boils down to the same. Could also Stomper and play Dryad. It's a little weaker in the face of Meat Hook Massacre for one. So maybe playing Dryad, sacrificing it is fine. Although it is easier to play Dryad in the future. So let's go for Stomper, and then if they exile that, I'm not too upset. And yeah, opponent was holding a Vanishing Verse. Okay, so do we play around Meat Hook Massacre? I think we should. Opponent passes, so now we can Storm the Festival. Seems better than Elspeth. Hitting Stomper and Lair. Keep developing our mana. And we're close to just flashing back Storm the Festival now. Opponent's still on three lanes. This is where they could have Wandering Emperor, but Stomper has Vigilance. So, Elspeth plus Dryad Sacrifice looks good. Happy to keep plussing Elspeth. And could give Florahedron Vigilance if we'd like. Show them what you've got. Attack. Emperor could make a token to trade for Florahedron, which would be acceptable. Right, never mind, I Ganjo killing Stomper, so that punishes me for not putting a counter on it. But still a fine exchange at the end of the day. So next turn we can flashback Storm. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they're just too far behind here. All the card advantage and extra mana. Ramp is certainly a nice archetype to beat some of these grindier control decks. Sweet, so yeah, we got to see our green-white ramp deck featuring Elspeth in action here. And quite pleased with how Elspeth performed, being able to give some of our large creatures lifelink in the aggressive matchups, while kind of giving us a threat that doesn't die to sweepers against control, is right where we want to be. Can definitely go with an equal split between Elspeth and Renan7, just wanted to see more of Elspeth in action. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.